Hello, Nana here. Welcome back to, to TIS 100. Today I will be looking at the signal edge detector. I have a couple of different solutions for you. Uh, none of them are exactly Reddit perfect, but they are close enough and they, more importantly, they demonstrate the workings of the puzzle and different ways to solve it and also how to scale this solution. So let's start. What is a signal edge detector? It's basically a program that takes in a series of numbers and for each pair of numbers, so the current number and the previous number or yeah, if you look at like this one, then this is the previous one, and for the first one you can assume 0 as the previous value. If the difference between the two numbers is 10 or greater, then we emit a 1. Otherwise we emit a 0. So we're looking for a difference of uh, 10 or more between any two numbers in a sequence. So. How do we go about that? The, the first solution I come up with was basically a continuation of one of the previous videos where you have to sort numbers. So I figured, okay, so let's say we take two, the, the two numbers, the current one and the previous one, we sort them so that we always know which one of is, which is the largest. And then we subtract the smaller number from the larger number then you end up with a number that's always positive. If you then subtract 10, if it goes negative, you know the difference is smaller than 10. Actually, if it goes to 0 or negative, it's smaller than 10. Otherwise, you know, if it's still positive, then you know that the difference is at least 10 points. So I figured that would be a, a a decent way to, to solve the problem. So I, I set about coding it and I came up with the, these steps. So first I duplicate the inputs. Why do you duplicate them? Because first you want to sort them and then based on which of the two numbers, the first or the second, is greater you want to emit them either in that order or you want to switch the order so you always have the, fir the first number larger than the second one or at least have them be equal so that's what I do so this node it stores the number in the accumulator and then emits it twice so this is the new value as I've uh, written down here in the comment and this one it has two functions. But one, it passes down the value from here, so it passes the new value through. And secondly, it stores the old value and emits that twice as well. So in this node, you receive two sets of numbers. You get the old number from up, then you get the new number from up. And then after that, you once again get them in the same order. So you get the old number first, and then you get the new number. And let's see, is there anything uh, tricky in here? I don't think so. This is just pass the old number through. Ah, there's uh, another trick here. Remember what I said. I was assuming the first value to be a zero, because zero comes in and we need to give an output for that but it's only the first number and you need two numbers to generate an output so I'm comparing this with a zero because well they say the first value is always zero you can take that to mean it's this one but you can also take that to assume that there's an invisible zero before that or that the first output is always a zero either way it's uh, it works by basically I take the value in the accumulator the initial value of an accumulator is a zero so I just pass that one down and then we pass the number from up we pass it through then once again we pass the stored value down and then we take the new value we store it in arc and then we send it down so the next pass through the value here is the number that was previously new and is now the old value. 
so this cycles very very nicely so let's go to the meat and potatoes of this machine so we sort the inputs here we've done that before so what we do is we take the input number and we store it in the accumulator and we subtract the next one and then we have a look is the number less than zero if it's less than zero then we know that the new number the second number we got is greater than the first if it's not it falls through and then we declare the old value to be greater which is the first input so if the old value was greater that's the first input then we can just pass the inputs that are being emitted here the second time just straight through old number first new number second and then we jump back to main and we just repeat this as we go if the new number is greater then we need to emit the second number before the first but we are going to receive the old number first so what we do is we take the old number from up and we store it in the accumulator which at this point we no longer need the value in the accumulator so we can just take the number and store it then we take the number from up which is the new value and we pass it on straight to the right and after that we take the old value which we temporarily stored in the accumulator and we send it to the right and then we fall through and go back to main and because the first step here is always to take the old number and move it into the accumulator this is not going to be an issue this will just work fine So and then last so now this just guarantees we always provide a sorted order of numbers here always get the great number and then we get a small number so here we apply the last bit of the algorithm which is actually detecting the edge so we take the input value we store it in the accumulator we subtract the next value so that's great minus small then we subtract 10 and then if the value is less than 0 we declare that there is no edge because in order for the number to be less than 0 the result of subtracting the small number from the great number can at most be uh, 9 points because if you have 9 minus 10 then you have a value that's less than 0 so we declare no edge if the result would have been 10 10 minus 10 becomes 0 0 is not less than 0 it's equal to 0 so it falls through and if it would be 11 or more then we would have had 1 or more so we have a positive number which once again it's not less than 0 so it falls through and then we declare an edge in case we declare we, we find an edge we simply send 1 down and we go back to the main and otherwise we send a zero down and we go back to main so this little bit of subtraction taking down zero and then just finding the right jump to detect the edge is basically the, the, the biggest challenge when <laughs> finding this but it, it, this in general it's, it's a clunky solution if you run it you see it has 418 cycles it does use four nodes, so it's optimal in that regard. And that has 24 instructions, which is also a bit on the high side. So, let's go to the next solution. Let's look at the instructions. So, first thing you'll probably notice is that there's a lot less code on this side. There's, this one is still mostly filled, but there's not a lot of code here. So this is just a dumb pipe, it takes the value from up and passes it down. This is also a dumb pipe. And here we do the first slightly tricky thing. Which is we take the value that's in the accumulator and we send it to the right. And then we take the value from up and we send it to the right. And after that we emit the value from... Oh no, wait. Blah. This is actually two steps. So we take the value from the accumulator, we send it to the right. Then we store the value from up in the accumulator, and then we send that one to the right. 
and the annotations here suggest what this is all about. O for old value and for new value. So we still emit the values with old first and then new second, but we only do it once. We store it to remember the old value, but you only emit each value only one time. So all the logic is in here. Why is that? And that's because I came to a different uh, conclusion. And that is that we don't actually need to sort the numbers. Which is also from one of the previous puzzles. One of the optimizations there was to not figure out which of the two numbers is greater and pass it in that order. It's just merely doing a subtraction and then the do a double check. Is then the resulting number negative? Then just negate it to make it positive again. So that's what we do here. If you have 10 minus 8, then you get 2. That's a positive number. If you have 8 minus 10, then you get negative 2. So that's the reverse. It's the negative number if you reverse these two. The way to go from minus 2 to 2 is to use the negate instruction. This saves almost an entire node of code. If you apply this trick, so to say, rather than doing a full sort before you do your subtraction. And after that the logic is still the same. So you still get the, the, the greater number minus the smaller number, which is in case you get the greater number first. In case you get the smaller number first, you just do a double check and then you get negate the number to get the same result. And after that you can just continue and apply the main algorithm. So that's exactly what we do, do here. We take the value from the left, that's the old number, and we store it in the accumulator. Then we subtract the next value, and then we jump to old greater, in case the number is greater than zero. So if we get a positive answer, we jump to old is greater, which is two lines ahead. So we skip one instruction, and that is the negate instruction. The negate instruction is only called in case the number is either negative or zero. But in both situations we will end up with the positive version or negating zero just yields zero. So this solves everything. And after that we just apply the same algorithm as we did before. We subtract 10 and then we do a jump to either no edge or to edge, we just fall through to edge, but depending on what we do. And this is a very, very, very elegant solution. You, it, it uses hardly any instructions. It's 390 cycles, 4 nodes and 14 instructions. It's, it's very elegant. I, I, I really like it. And there is a nice side effect of this. There's only two nodes actually in use, and the other two are dumb pipes. So if you want to optimize for cycle count, we have something interesting we can do. We can parallelize the solution, because we do a lot of work in a single node. So if we manage to set up one, two, three nodes that are all basically applying the same algorithm, subtracting the numbers, negating it if needed, subtracting 10, and then checking if there is an edge. If we just se uh, set up a data flow up here, making sure that this one gets the numbers for the, uh, the, the zero input and the first input. So it can do zero minus one for uh, to the basically compute the first value. If we then make this one compute the next value and this one compute the next value and after that we go back and make this one compute the next this one the next, this one the next and go back, next, next, next jump, next, next, next and so forth until the list is empty and then all we have to do afterwards is just make sure that we emit the values here in the same order as that they came in so we first take the value that comes from the right we pipe it in here then we take the value from here and we pass it through and then we wait for the value that comes from this one and we send it out. And then we just look back and look for this value again. So this is just simple passing through code. This is 
more or less the untouched version of the previous solution just doing all the same logic in the same node and there are some annotations up here for myself that help me remind me which numbers it needed to process and how that would impact the flow up here because this is this is the least elegant bit of the solution this looks pretty complicated actually there's a, a lot of instructions over here there's a couple of less there here and less here so let's have a look let's just start by example this one needs number zero and number one we already concluded in a previous solution that accumulators are initialized with a zero value so if we just take that and send it out we have our zero value So that's exactly what we do here we take the accumulator value and we send it down so we get zero then we need a one that one we are going to get from the left and we send it into the accumulator after which we look back and then we take the value from the accumulator and we send it down and one of my previous solutions actually had me duplicate that code until I realized that I was actually duplicating the exact same two instructions twice so I took that out as an optimization um, so this one it one it needs to obtain number one but it also this machine needs number one as well as the first input so we take the number one value, we take it from the left, we store it in the accumulator after that we take that value, we send it to the right and then we send it down so we emit it twice so in order for this to get the number, obviously we need to get it from our input because this machine is not interested in input number one we can just take the number from up and pass it straight to the right where it gets accumulated, emit it down there, emit it down here and here it just gets accumulated and passed through ok, so se second number, this one is now crunching second number this needs input number 2 so last we left off we sent the value from the accumulator down next up we take a number from the left and we send it down we only need to use number 2 once because this one gets 2, 3, then this one gets 3, 4, and next up it's 4, 5. So it doesn't need 2. So all it needs to do is just pass it through from the left downwards. And this one, however, needs number 2 as its first input for down here. So what we do here is we take the num value from up, we store it in the accumulator, and then we emit it once to the right, so we can pass it down for here as the second value for our first computation and after that we take the value from the accumulator which is number 2 and we send it down and we send it here as the first input and then we need number 3 number 3 we need once here as the second value and then we need it here as the first input of the second sequence so that's for computing the third value no wait 1, 2, 3 so this is going to be 4 so Three. It's the last one here, it's the first one there. Yes, this gets confusing, hence all the comments. So we take the value from up, we store it in the accumulator, then we send it once to the right so this machine can use it, and we send it once down so this machine can use it. Then what we do here, uh, last we actually send the value from the left downwards for as number 2 to process it. So the next instruction is to take the value that's going to be for number 3 and take it from the left and pass it on straight through to the right because this one it needs 1, 2, 4 and 5 it doesn't actually need 3 and this one all it does is take a number and what we do is we accumulate we, we send the value from the accumulator down and then we wait for a value on the left side to store in the accumulator and then send it down so that's exactly what we do here. We take the value and we send it down. And then this one needs number 4, which is basically identical to the flow for number 1. So at that point, here we can just fall through, loop back, and start processing this one as if uh, 
basically processing number four the same as number one and then process number two the same as number five and so forth and here the same logic applies and that's how you parallelize a, pro a uh, problem that previously was solved single threadedly so I'll just step through it for a bit this one gets a zero input but here you already see it had a zero from the accumulator and it's already passed down as a first input so zero is now here and it's waiting now for the one input which comes from up here which at this point is here so boom it's in the accumulator so we send it to the right we store it in the accumulator and we send it down and then we subtract it and then we do a jump if greater than zero which it's not so we fall through we negate it which is not really that impressive we subtract 10 and if it's less than zero we don't have an edge so we jump there and we emit one uh, we emit zero I mean which is there which we pass through down here which we take straight down and we flush it out in the meantime we've already concluded that there is an edge in the next number and we are currently here in the middle of processing our first value so this is just the same algorithm and it just runs through and it runs through and it runs through and if I speed it up greatly you get to 190 cycles using 9 nodes and 46 instructions and last I checked the best solution on reddit the fastest solution on reddit ran in 129 cycles it used all 11 nodes so these two that I've nicely used here for uh, for comments they were also used and it took a grand total of 96 instructions so if I'm just speculating a bit on how that solution would look like because this is a very elegant solution in, in my mind you have the machine doing the work uh, duplicated three times you have some, some logistics work in the bottom and you have some logistics work at the top and every node has a, a clear function and it, it, it's very it, it, it's very clear once you know what the flow does it, it's understandable for me using these two nodes would upset this balance so to say because this is probably going to be a processor node just like this uh, these three this is going to be part of the work distribution that happens up here so after this it will have a couple of extra instructions to pass data here and this one probably needs to ha uh, emit its values to the right because this node is not in use and so that would mean this one after it's done processing its own number it actually needs to wait a bit to pass through numbers from the left down here so this one can emit both numbers here and this one needs to wait twice for a number from the left value that's speculating that's probably how that solution works maybe maybe it could be possible to have the logic from this in an, one of the bottom nodes as well and pass more data through but I'm not quite sure because this is already very constrained on instructions there's a, a blank line at the bottom and this comment could be cleared and uh, let's see the edge comment here it is actually it's a blank comment it, it could be removed as well so you can have because it's not referred to it's just a convenience for myself to mark this little section as edge as opposed to this one being non-edge that's just a, a way to clarify the code but it could be removed to make the code one li line shorter so then you have three blank lines to work with to pass data through which is not a lot so that's why I'm sticking with this one. This this is elegant, even though it, it's not 
the fastest of all. Okay, and I think that's everything I had to say about the signal itch detector today. So, once again, if you have any kind of feedback, please do leave a comment. Um, leave a like on YouTube if you enjoyed watching this all the way through to the end. And subscribe to the channel for updates. I will be covering more of TS100 in the future. Um, just taking a, a, a slower and steadier pace to it. But I will be back. And with that, I thank you for watching. And I will see you next time.